Hi, I'm Julianne Cost. Here are eight ways to select colors in Photoshop. First, we can use the eyedropper tool by either selecting it from the toolbar or by tapping the I key. Then we can choose a sample size. The larger the size, the more colors are sampled and then average together to create the resulting color. Then we can choose to sample from whichever layers we want and then click in the image area in order to sample the color. The sample ring displays the sampled color at the top and the current color at the bottom surrounded by gray. To hide the sample ring, simply uncheck it. The second way is to use the foreground and background color pickers in the toolbar. We can click on any of the different color modes in order to change their display or enter in CMYK values. Here I can use the large area to select a saturation and brightness and then use the color bar in order to change the hue. We can view the new and current color swatch, see out of gamut colors, and web safe color warnings. We can add a color to the swatches panel, view different color libraries, limit the colors to web safe, and even copy their hex number by using Command C on Mac, Control C on Windows. If I position the cursor over the image area, I can then select a color from the photograph. You can even assign a keyboard shortcut in order to open the color picker. I'll choose Edit, and then Keyboard Shortcuts, making sure that the shortcuts are set for Tools, scroll down, and then click in the empty well to the right of the foreground color picker and type in the letter K. Now to quickly display the foreground color picker, I can simply tap K. To reverse the foreground and background color picker, we can click on this double-headed arrow here or just tap the X key. To restore the default foreground and background colors, we can click on the default color icon or we can tap the D key. Some tools like the Type or Shape tools have a color swatch in the Options bar and clicking that will also bring up the color picker. The third way to select colors would be to use the color panel. The panel can be enlarged and there are several different ways for displaying the color. One of my favorite is the color wheel because I have access to the hue, saturation, and brightness sliders. Or I can use the outer circle to select a hue and the inner triangle to select my saturation and brightness. You can also use the color panels flyout menu to copy a color as HTML or to copy a color's hex code. The fourth way would be to use the heads up display or the HUD color picker. From the Photoshop menu, I'll choose Preferences and then General. On Windows, you can use the Edit menu to choose Preferences and then General. And we can choose from either a wheel or a strip. I'll select the wheel and then tap the B key to select a painting tool, in this case the brush. Hold down the Control, Option, and Command key on Mac or the Shift plus Alt plus Right mouse click on Windows and then click in order to display the heads up display. It's very similar to the color picker. There are two areas. Here I can select the saturation and brightness and in the outer area the hue. Now if I've selected a hue and I want to jump across to change the saturation and brightness, I can release the keyboard shortcuts, hold down the space bar and that will freeze the hue that I've selected so I can then reposition my cursor over the square area, release the spacebar, and then adjust the saturation and brightness. If I need to jump back over to the hue and I want to freeze the saturation and brightness, again I'll hold down the spacebar, jump over, release the spacebar, and then continue to select my color. The fifth way would be to select a color from the swatches panel. Here we can see the recently used swatches appear at the top. I'll go ahead and make this a little bit larger select a recently used color, and then to save that to the swatches, I'll click on the plus icon. We can name the swatch and also add it to the current library, but we'll talk about the libraries panel in just a moment. In order to organize my swatches, I can click on the folder icon in order to create a group, and then drag and drop the swatch within that group. We can use the flyout menu in order to export selected swatches which will save them in the Photoshop format, 
or we can export the swatches for Exchange if we want to share them across multiple applications such as InDesign and Illustrator. You can also choose to import swatches where you can load those saved swatches or you can choose an HTML, CSS, or SVG document and if that document has any colors defined, Photoshop will add them to the swatches panel. The sixth way would be to save and then select colors from the Libraries panel. Here I'm in my Alaska Library. I'll tap the I key to select the eyedropper, select a blue from the image, and then use the plus icon at the bottom of the Libraries panel to save that foreground color to my library. The advantage of saving content in a library is that the content is automatically synchronized between multiple installs of Photoshop using the same Adobe ID, for example, your work and your home computer. Libraries are also shared with other Creative Cloud applications like Illustrator, and the libraries that you create can be shared with other people using the flyout menu and choosing either Invite People or Get Link. The Libraries panel also has an option to extract colors from an image. I'll choose Extract from Image, then select Color Themes, choose a color mood, make any desired adjustments, and then when I select Save to CC Libraries, Photoshop will automatically capture that color theme. The seventh way is very convenient when you're using a painting tool such as a brush. I'll tap B to select the brush, then hold the Option key on Mac or the Alt key on Windows in order to temporarily access the eyedropper and select a color from the image. And the eighth way works very well if you want to find the average color of a selected area. I'll tap M to select the Marquee tool, drag out a marquee, and then choose Filter, Blur, and average. I'll tap I to select the eyedropper, select the color, and then add this color to my libraries as well. And before we wrap up, Adobe has a hidden gem for those of you who want to learn more about color. Check out color.adobe.com where you can create different color themes using different rules of color harmony. Once you're happy with the results, you can click Save in order to save the color theme to your libraries. I'm Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.